There exists a hidden world of microorganisms beyond what we can see with our unaided eyes. Over a hundred years ago, this world was discovered through the progress of science. It was a huge leap forward for mankind. Scientific medicine came to understand how germs cause disease. We washed our hands, sterilized surgery, and created vaccines, antibiotics, and drugs that work. Life expectancy doubled in less than 50 years. But now the happy story starts to falter. Today, a war is being fought against reason. Science is treated with suspicion, perhaps born of fear, and medical advance is challenged by the march of irrational belief. A third of us now spend over 1.6 billion pounds a year on superstitious alternative remedies, which, as far as the evidence can show, don't work. OK? Yep. Good. Have you asked any angels to come close to you? No. No, well, you haven't got any, then. If any remedy is tested under controlled scientific conditions and proved to be effective, it will cease to be alternative and will simply become medicine. So-called alternative medicine either hasn't been tested or it has failed its tests. There wasn't a control, it was just an outcome. It was just, it was just a pilot study. Right. So that's not really a, no, pro no. a proper trial. And some alternatives are funded by us taxpayers, even though their unproven claims question the known laws of physics. You, know, you might think I'm gulling the patient. I don't claim that it's much more than a hypothesis. What I do say is that I have quite considerable evidence that homeopathy does work, and I'm sure that it's safe. In the Middle Ages, healers would conjure up evil spirits or magical spells. Now, in the 21st century, it seems they turn to black holes and, above all, quantum physics. Quantum theory accounts for the anomalous behavior of light and atoms. It's astonishingly accurate, but notoriously difficult to grasp. But Deepak Chopra, who once qualified as a doctor, has seized upon quantum jargon and applied it to healing. He claims disease can be caused and cured by a shift in consciousness. If you believe in the rock, you're automatically believing in God. Chopra has managed to become a one-man alternative health industry. He's worth up to $75,000 per lecture, and in this era of self-absorption, he claims Michael Jackson, Madonna, and Hillary Clinton as followers. If you feel genuinely attractive, you'll attract other people to you. The great American physicist Richard Feynman once said, if you think you understand quantum theory, you don't understand quantum theory. Isn't Deepak Chopra just exploiting quantum jargon as plausible sounding hocus pocus? Quantum healing is a theory that a shift in consciousness creates a shift in biology. That's it. We try and get into every aspect of a patient's life, their relationships, their hopes, their dreams, and uh, then we combine it with a ritual of um, deep meditation, massage, and really a lot of spiritual counseling, including the fear of death. We think that uh, many times uh, patients uh, uh, feel healed even though they may die from a disease if they learn to go beyond their personal fear of death. And you can never do that unless you uh, have a patient have a spiritual experience. Where did the quantum theory come into that? I... Oh, it's just a metaphor, just like uh, a, an electron or a photon is an indivisible unit of information and energy. A thought is an indivisible unit of consciousness. Oh, so it's, an, it's a metaphor for a, for a unit. It's nothing to do with quantum theory as in physics. No, I think quantum theory has a lot of uh, things to say about observer effect. There are a school of physicists who believe that quantum leaps, for example, are examples of discontinuity. And uh, creativity in consciousness is also an example of discontinuity. And that healing may be a biological 
phenomenon that uh, relies on biological creativity, that at very fundamental levels it may be a discontinuous phenomenon. It's something unpredictable that happens in the proliferation of uncertainty. So it sounds like a sort of poetic use of the word discontinuity. It's, it's actually confusion, isn't it, to bring in um, quantum theory other than as a metaphor, but it sounds as though you're both doing it as a metaphor and a, a little tinge of, of something like what physicists are talking about as well. Well, I think there's controversy. The aficionados in the world of quantum physics have somehow hijacked the word for their own use. Oh, OK. So they've hijacked your word I quantum. think what happens is that there are fundamentalists in science. Uh, that is absolutely wrong. Science's quest is to try to sort out, to tease out those bits that we don't I understand. Science and work has become out. so arrogant in its um, in its premise that it has all the answers in a mechanistic approach that it has, whilst it has gotten rid of lots of things like polio and malaria and tuberculosis in many parts of the world, uh, we are now seeing the emergence of modern epidemics that are a result of some of the things that have come about through science. Chopra at least wears his disdain for Western science openly. The rest of us are prone to politely blurring the vital distinction between science and mumbo jumbo. The idea that ancient equals years of accumulated wisdom is a fallacy. It's a teasing irony that the moneyed classes in the rich West, indulging superseded Hindu healing magic when, back in India, people are voting with their feet and opting for modern vaccines and antibiotics. Resuscitating Ayurveda today is rather like bringing back bleeding with leeches. In medicine, ancient also means developed before we understood the causes of disease, before germ theory. It was based on ignorance then, and age makes it no truer. We misguidedly look back to a golden age that never was. Ours is the golden age of safe, tested medicine, effective beyond placebo, in which we've cut infant mortality and conquered diseases, then forgotten they existed. Let's hear it for Western scientific medicine. In the 20th and 21st centuries, we've all but eliminated terrible diseases like polio, completely eradicated smallpox by a worldwide program of vaccination. Antibiotics, well, I wouldn't be here but for antibiotics, and I guess there's a good chance that you wouldn't be either. Blood transfusions, magnificent surgery, all these things are given to us by scientific principles, scientifically trained doctors. All the methods are properly tested and retested. None of that could be said for so-called alternative medicine. The indulgence of superstitious alternative remedies implicitly casts doubt on scientific advance and undermines confidence in real medical progress.